By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome at another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at the final game of the Reborn League's first event, the sealed event. And these are the two top performing decks here, and that's why they're going to play on stream the final match of the evening. And we have Chef on the right against Ron on the left. And Ron is playing a red-green deck, and Chef is playing a red black deck. Now remember, both of these players have opened up a starter deck of 4th edition, two boosters of Fallen Empires, and two boosters of Chronicles, and they had to build a 40-card deck with those cards. So they weren't allowed to pass it along, that's what you see with a draft. They weren't allowed to take any cards from their own collection, just use these cards. Uh, if you'd like to know more about the Reborn League, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now that will take you to the playlist and you can see my opening, but you can also see the other three games that were played on stream. And if you'd like to know more about the Reborn League in general, you can check the description below and there you'll find a link to a website where the organizer is explaining everything about this event. Okay, enough said. Let's continue to game one and see who's going to win this first sealed event. Game number one. And let's see who's on the play and who's on the draw. We can kind of see that hand of Chef Kader. He's sitting on the right and Ron, we've seen him before playing in game number two, I believe. He's sitting on the left. And that's a good opening there. Uh, I believe they're rats. It's a 1-1 one, one creature and they cannot be blocked by walls. And look at that. Ron is opening here with a black vice. And that's actually pretty good because usually the vice can be kind of useless with these um, sealed decks because there are a lot of smaller creatures and smaller casting cost spells in most of these decks. But now playing it early, at least they can do some damage. It's one damage for Chef. Attacking with the rat here, dealing in damage to Ron. Playing a mountain, so having both colors, but nothing to cast here. And let's see if Ron can find a solution to deal with the rats. And, well, it, it is a solution. You do need two mana. This is the amulet, and you can tap it to prevent one damage. I believe it's called the Amulet of Krug. And there we see an orcish veteran from Fallen Empires. So that's, uh, that's pretty good for Chef Gear, putting some pressure on Ron. And there is no creature from Ron yet. So there is an attack using the amulet to at least prevent one damage. Means he's taking two damage in total, going to 16. And there we see Uncle Istavan. Very cool card, fantastic art. Of course, from the dark. And I really like the axe that Uncle Estevan is holding. Like you can see the, the, the skulls tied around it and even some blood on the axe itself. Very dark art in the dark makes sense. And Ron is passing turn again. And this is not looking good for Ron here. Has to take even more damage. That means he's going to 13. And this is an interesting card here played by Chef. And it's a card from Legends, the Chronicle reprint here at Tor Vauki. And I just wanted to tell you what it's going to do, but Ron already took care of it with the Drain Life. That's pretty good right now because he needed the life as well. Going to 16 in total now, but still no creatures. Is Ron playing creatureless? And there's a Troll Retainer. I believe it gives plus one, plus one to a creature and you can sacrifice the Retainer to regenerate the creature. Playing it on the rats. Dealing 5 damage now to Ron means he's going back to 11. And, ooh, cool, anime dead. So he's taking back the Tron, uh, the, sorry, not the Tron, the uh, Tor Valky. And the cool thing about the Valky is you can tap it and it can deal 2 damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Obviously, that's not very relevant right now. Uh, oh, this is cool, a breeding pit. And that means that Shefke is going to gain a 0-1 Thrall token at the end of his turn, putting it into play right now. And at least the 2-3 creature on Ron's side, because it gets a minus 1, minus 0 uh, counter from the anime dead, at least it's offering him some protection. And Shefke is thinking... Should I attack and deal some damage? But he's deciding not to, also because the Wauki doesn't have summoning sickness anymore. 
And there's a bump knight played by Ron. So it looks like Ron is kind of stabilized and he's still on 11. So that's not too bad. And I think we're going to get a really, really full board here. Because the thrall tokens are just going to keep coming. And there's an attack now. Interesting choice. A block by Uncle Estevan. And he's preventing the damage with his oasis. And trying to find out if he can use the Valky to actually deal damage here to Uncle Estevan. He's deciding not to. That's interesting because I think he could have killed Uncle Estevan here. But actually he can because when we look at when we take a closer look at the card, I completely forgot about this. All damage done by creatures is reduced to zero. So that means that he can only deal two damage with the wow key and he has three toughness. So it's actually a pretty good blocker here. In the meanwhile, we see that Ron has kind of expended his board with a wall of brambles and an asp. So both of these players, oh, and this is interesting because this creature can fly and has three toughness. And I'm talking about the Dragon Whelp on Shefka's side. So he can attack with the Dragon Whelp. At this moment, it looks like Ron has no answer. Is he just going to put more creatures on the board? That's exactly what it's going to do. A Scafe Zombies, a 2-2 vanilla creature. And that's not going to help him. And he's attacking, pumping to four here. Of course, he can use the Amulet of Krug, preventing at least one damage, but still taking three, going to eight. And will this Dragon Whelp give Shefka the victory here? Very strong uncommon. Pulled out of that fourth edition starter deck. And Ron just playing a Swamp, passing along. Nothing he can do. Another attack for four. Shefka is not even... Oh, he's passing turn and now he's in, uh, untapping. And he's just going to attack again. Probably going to pump it again. And we're going to see a similar play. Look at this, a howl from beyond. Super cool. <laughs> That's so nice. And with that howl from beyond, Shefka manages to win this first game. And what a nice way to finish. Well done. So that's game one for Shefka, and uh, let's let these players sideboard and then go to game number two. Game number two, and it's that first victory for Chef, so I guess Ron is on the play. At least he gets to choose. And both of these decks have won their previous three matches, so they're 3-0. And whoever's going to win this one is actually going to win uh, this first Reborn League sealed event. And let's see if they want to keep their hands. It looks like it. Or not. <laughs> I guess I guess not. I, I thought they were going to keep both players taking a mulligan here. Playing according to the London mulligan rules. So they get to draw seven and then have to pick one of those cards and put them at the bottom. And this is going to be interesting. So another shuffle, giving each other the decks. And there we see the first draw here by Chef. I can see a swamp in his hand there. I see a drain life on the side of Ron, I believe. Both putting a card on the bottom. So I guess they're both going to keep. And that's a good start here from Ron with a Scrip Sprites. Attacking and playing a swamp. Double Swamp into the Witches, and that's pretty good with this board state because the Witches can deal one damage to any target and the opponent can deal a damage back. And that means that the Script Sprites are probably going to die unless Ron can find a way to get rid of the Witches. Attacking here, dealing another damage. And Chef going to 18. What can he do here? Playing escape zombies, that's all he can do, I guess. That means the script sprites are gone. Gonna deal a damage back to Chef, so he's going to 17. And he's also playing a Bump Knight. And Chefka can give his knight first strike. So that means that an attack at this point 
is not in his favor, but he plays a paralyze. Nice. Paralyze means that Chefkin has to pay four mana, but he doesn't have four mana. So that's an extra two damage done here by Ron. And there's the, um, I think it's Barrel's Cage. Bar Barrel's Cage. It's a, it's a card from the dark. And what you can do with it, you can actually keep a creature tapped when you activate it. So it doesn't untap during the untap phase, the next untap phase. So that means he can activate Barrel's Cage, but he can also choose to untap his Pump Knight. And he's just attacking with the Witches. And he's playing a Wall of Spears. And this is a cool card. This is the Orcish Spy. <laughs> I always liked this card as a kid. Um, what it does, it say 1-1. One, one. And um, you can tap it. And then you can look at the top three cards of uh, a library. So you can look at the top three cards of your opponent's library. You cannot do anything with it. You cannot put it in order or change anything. But still. And that's exactly what Shevk is doing now on the end step. He wants to show it to the camera, but it's a little bit too high for us to see. And there's Shevka paying for to untap his Pump Knight and attacking with it. He's going to let it go because of that first strike ability, meaning that Ron is going to 17. Only has that single scape zombies on the board. Playing a Tangle Maggot. And oh my, <laughs> it's just, we saw this card in game number two. And I just, I needed like some time to understand it. Uh, if you want to see me or hear me trying to explain this card, there's a link popping up right now that will take you to that game. And you can give it a try. What Tackle Maggot does, it, it gives a minus zero, minus one counter during the upkeep on the creature it's enchanted on. And when the creature die, dies, the owner, controller of that creature, I should say, can put the ta Tangle Maggot on another creature. And that's exactly what Shevka's doing. And there's also something special happening when all the creatures are dead, but it looks like that's going to take a while. And here we see an Uncle Estevan cast by Shevka, and we see here that first minus zero, minus one uh, counter. And again, I guess Ron is trying to show the cards, but it's a little bit up too high, so we cannot see it. I guess they were Lance. And this Cave Zombies is now just a 2-1, and he's just going to attack because it's going to die anyway. And in response, we see a Witch's activation Dealing one damage. And he's going to put the Maggot on the Orcish Spy. Or no, he's actually going to deal one damage to the Orcish Spy because of the Witches. You know, this is getting complicated really quickly. And again, a minus zero, minus one counter. And now Shevka has to start putting it on his own creatures. Putting it on the Wall of Spears because that, that has a defense of three. And this is interesting. There is a Black Knight, a 2 2 first striker. So it's a decent blocker, but there are a lot of creatures here. And I believe the Orcish Veteran is a 2 3. And in combination with the Witches here, Shevka can kill the Black Knight. It's actually pretty nice. So I guess the better decision would have been from Ron to just uh, take the damage for now. But it doesn't really matter that much. At least the Wall of Brambles is a good blocker. It's a 2-3 wall with regeneration for one green. And it, it seems to be good enough for now. Ron on 13, Shefka on 14. Looking at his cards. Apparently looking something up on his phone and you see that more often during this tournament because you're playing sealed, you're playing with cards, cards you don't see often. And so people are sometimes a little bit confused with the rules and remember these old cards, they just have tons of text on them and usually they had to change the oracle text. And we can see Shevka now walking away going to ask a question probably to another player. And these events are pretty casual, so there are no judges or anything. Uh, usually when you have a question, you discuss it together and you ask some other players and then you'll find an answer. And the first step is always to check the internet to see if the oracle text of a card has been updated. 
because that's also the case with many many cards and attacking just with the two three so i guess there is a plan here dealing an extra damage here with the witches and i wonder what's going to happen next So he's going to, I guess, regenerate his wall. And they're having a little argument. And <laughs> now Ron is going to look up the rules. I'm not sure what this discussion is about. Maybe if you know this or uh, Ron or Shevke, if you're watching this video back, maybe you can let me know in the comments below if there's any other player that kind of knows what's going on here please let me know in the comments as far as i can tell this is a pretty standard situation where you see the veteran dealing two damage using his first strike ability and then the witches is going to deal another damage and then ron has to regenerate his wall of brambles and obviously um i think maybe they're discussing that because first the veteran deals two damage and then the witches deal a damage and before the wall can actually deal damage itself it has to regenerate and then it's going to tap and it no longer deals damage to the veteran at least that's what looks like is going to happen now and now ron has to decide where to deal his one damage to and this is kind of what i like you get like these interesting board states it's it's obviously it's also hard for me to follow because i i just see the game like you do uh, i don't know the context and it looks like this is interesting. Uh, it went really quickly, but Shevka is using his cage. I'll put it on the screen now, a card from the dark. And if you pay three, a creature doesn't untap. And that means that the wall of brambles is not untapping. And that is bad news here for Ron, because that means he's kind of open, only has that uh, throw to block. And it's not the best blocker. It's a one, two, I believe. Attacking now, and look at that. We have the dragon whelp again. That's pretty powerful. And the maggot's still doing its work. And I do believe that the wolf brambles now gets untapped, if I'm not mistaken. And that's exactly what's happening now. And Ron just drew his card. Hasn't looked at it yet. Only one card in hand. So this is going to be his second card. And it doesn't look good for run here and that means that chef is on his way to win this sealed tournament let's see if ron can do anything against it i don't think so it looks pretty ho hopeless also with that bird maiden on the board as well having flying and of course dragon whelp i mean he's still on 10 life but dealing a damage to run now bring him to nine all he can really do is deal a damage back exactly. So that means Chef is going to 13. Untapping now. And is he going to swing in for the win already? Playing a word of... Uh, is it a word of binding? It's something with binding. Uh, tapping the creatures and that's a victory. Look at the fist bump. Oh, and there was a Lord of the pit about to join the battlefield i would have loved to see that in action but uh shefka beat him to it so uh shefka congratulations you've won the first sealed event of the reborn league it looks like both of these players are going to play another game so let's have a look let's look at this bonus game so remember shefka's already won winning the first two games so this third game is just uh well for fun like I guess the reason we play magic in the first place uh it looks like he's taking a mulligan here and that is chef on the right he's taking a mulligan and or or not i guess a little bit hard to follow here he's playing a rats and look what what ron is doing here he's discarding um what's that called again it's a six three creature i think it's a feral talit but this is an interesting choice choosing not to play but just to discard a card and there's an attack by the rats it's a one one creature it cannot be blocked by wolves and there's a script sprites on the side of ron playing a swamp 
An anime debt, that's, a pre <laughs> that's pretty cool. So he's using his anime debt to play his Feral Tally. So that's a pretty cool play run. Wow, and during the upkeep, there is a, a Spore Counter being placed on the Talit, and that can give him regeneration. And look at that, that means he can now deal 7 damage, and what a cool play here. Or actually, I should say uh, 6 damage, because there is a minus 1, uh, minus 0 counter because of the anime dead. Um, so that means it's a 5-3 now. Also a cool card, look at that, Ashnot's Altar. Or, sorry, Ashnot's Transmogrant, I believe. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but what it does, you can sack it and it turns target creature into an artifact creature and gives it a plus one, plus one counter. So that means those rats are now turned into an artifact and they're now 2 2. And there's the goblin digging team on the side of Shevka. And that cage is keeping the tally to tap there. So the 5 3 big boy. Cannot untap because of the cage. And every upkeep it gets an extra regeneration counter on it. And there's a full attack here by Ron. Dealing two points of extra damage here. Pumping the pump knight. That means that Shefke gets five damage in total. Going down to seven. Attacking with the rats here. So if Ron can win this one at least he can save his honor. And there are the witches by Shevka, a very strong card in this sealed pool because there are so many creatures with one toughness. And if you look now, the, the, the witch's next turn, when it doesn't have summoning sickness anymore, can kill two creatures there. But there is a drain life, well timed here by Ron, saving his army basically and gaining some life in the process. Going to 17, attacking with the script sprites. That means Shevka is now on six life. And it's not looking good for him, but remember, he's already won this match. But Ron can win his honor back here by at least taking one out of the three games. And tapping four here and playing that Dragon Whelp that actually gave him the victory in the first game. And he doesn't have enough mana to use his cage anymore. That means that Ron can now attack with his 5-3 again. And that's what he's going to do. He's actually going to attack yeah, with his Pump Knight as well. Killing off the rats and forcing Chef to chum block here with the Goblin Digging Team. And if he can somehow get rid of that Dragon Whelp. Tapping a lot of mana here. So what's coming? And there's the Scave Zombies again. <laughs> I think we saw the Zombies in every game. And there is a Pump Knight. A little bit of glare on the card there, but that's a Pump Knight as well. And he's using the cage again to keep the Tally tapped here. The 5-3 creature. But, I mean, that, that play of Ron was just legendary. Discarding your Tally and then taking it back with your Animate Dead. Fantastic. Attacking here with the Pump Knight, pumping it for four. There's no blocks from Chef, meaning he goes to two life. And then I believe that next turn, Chef uh, Ron can win this game because Chef doesn't have enough blockers. And now sacking his Fallen Land. No, 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 he's not gonna, he's not gonna make it there because he doesn't have enough blockers and he can only keep one creature tapped with the cage. So that means that game number three at least goes to Ron. It doesn't change anything uh, to the outcome of this match because Shevka is the winner of this first sealed event, winning every single game with his black-red deck. So congratulations, Shevka, on winning this first event of the Reborn League. And uh, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more content from the Reborn League, you can click on the playlist that's appearing right now on the screen and you can see the other three matches. And also if you'd like my opening and you can see how I've built my uh, Reborn deck. Uh, I went 2-2 two -two, by the way. I've won two games and lost two games in the, uh, the events. Not too bad. Um, 
for now i guess thank you for watching and if you want to support the channel you can do that by becoming a member subscribing that really helps leaving a comment leaving a like and spreading the word so thank you if you're already doing that for now thank you for watching and see you next time